Hey Luke here with CaptainCarp.com and today I'm going prospecting. I'm going to go check out a lake I've never fished before, I don't know much about, and we're going to see if we can't catch some catfish, maybe some carp. Just see what happens. And I'm going to show you my fishing bug out bag. This beauty here is amazing. And I can't wait to show you the goodies I've put inside, but everything you need for bank fishing right in here. It's amazing. Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Catfish and Carp. Uh, today, we're trying something a little different. I've got the boat rigged up for carp fishing, and I'm going to go hit a spot I've never fished before. Small lake. Um, I've heard it has carp in it, but I really know nothing about it. So we're just going to kind of go and explore and see what happens. It's uh, end of March. It's kind of cold. There's frost all over the boat and all over my fishing gear. But we're going to see if we can't uh, pull something out. Also, guys, I'm kind of excited to show you this. This is a three rod and reel little setup for bank fishing for catfish or carp. Everything I need, including landing net, rod, reels, vital arms, rigs, fits into this little bag. I'll show you a little bit more about that later. You have arrived. Look at this, this is a beautiful little lake and it's starting to warm up a little bit. All right, let's get this party started. Well, here I am on this brand new lake I've never fished before, and I'm trying to find out where all the fish are at. And I can look here on the sonar and tell that they're not spread out. I mean, it's just dead empty water everywhere I'm going. So this probably means the fish are very concentrated and they're hanging out in a very particular spot. The water temperature is 52 degrees, the air temperature is 44. Um, it's supposed to get up to the mid 50s uh, here by this afternoon, and it's a bright sunny day. So my guess, is that right now the fish are deep because the air temperature is so much lower than the water temperature. But that as the afternoon progresses and it gets warmer, they're transitioning to, to flat shallows where the sunlight's warming up the water. So my guess is that I need to look around drop-offs, you know, find a big open bay area that's, that's warming up in the sun and then look for the deepest spot next to that. That's my strategy right now. So we'll see what happens. All right, check this out. I'm seeing a few signals. See right down there, right there on the bottom. I'm just gonna mark it right there. Look at all those signals right there. That's something. My guess is they're probably catfish, small catfish, but you never know. Let's Jello Panko and corn pack bait on a method lead. Well, I want to know whether those signals are catfish or carp. So I brought a channel catfish rod and some frozen shad. I'll check it out there too and see if we get some hits. Well, luckily here in Virginia, we don't have any rod limits because I've got nine rods out, five uh, carp rods and four catfish rods. We're going to give this about 10 15 minutes if we don't catch anything we're out of here it's a gizzard shad a lot of the shad die in the winter time from the cold and the catfish love that all right that's uh that's the timer no bites so who knows maybe those signals were just large gizzard shad that gizzard shad i saw floating on the surface was pretty good size so might have actually been shad who knows but uh let's pull up and try another spot weather is really bipolar right now it keeps fluctuating between being sunny and warm and then the sun goes behind a cloud and the wind kicks up and it's freezing cold it's kind of messing me up and i wonder if it isn't messing the fish up too oh bass just jumped right there oh look at that look at that there's a that's something here watch this oh there's some there's bass feeding right here 
there was definitely a school of shad being attacked down there. Um, you could see the shad really clearly on the sonar. And I saw one jump up the surface and a bass come up for it. Looks like there were some bigger signals chasing it too. So maybe some catfish. So I dropped these lines down at 15 feet and we're just gonna slowly putter around and see if we can get above that school again. Well, no dice on that, but it was interesting. So uh, let's go see if we can go find some better signals. Yeah, we saw a little something on the sonar. We're gonna investigate here. Look at that, just got a hit right there. Not exactly a big old huge carp, but I'll take it. Well, it's been 15 minutes since I got that last catfish, so we're gonna pick up and move here. All right, I found a very specific feature with one good sized fish, maybe two, sitting on top of it. So I'm not gonna carpet bomb all of my rods. I'm just gonna put out like four of them, and I really gotta put it right on the spot. But uh, we'll see what happens. Well, my 15 minutes are up, and uh, I didn't get skunked, but darn close. Let's uh, go back to the boat ramp, and I'll show you that uh, new travel rod kit uh, that I've got. It's, it's pretty cool, guys. You'll like this. All right, guys, let me show you my travel pack here. So this is my bag. It's a Cabela's 8-rod ice fishing rod holder. And when you open it up, this is what we have. Okay, so this is my Japanese landing net right here. Here's the landing net and telescopes out. You're on a, on a dock, you can go down and net him and then pull it up. that and it's got a little clip so you can go and clip it on your side or whatever right, there we go and let me show you the rod here all right this is the Daiwa Liberty Club short swing 2270 it's nine foot and it is super light and it's paired up with the Daiwa Tatula which is um, a, just an incredible lightweight eight, uh, reel. So this rod and reel combo with the line on it weighs less than most fishing reels. It's incredibly light. I've landed 20 pound carp in rivers on this. Let me show you my terminal tackle right here. This is a quick release um, lead clip, a helicopter sleeve, a number eight swivel, and then a quick clip. I can leave my rods rigged up and put them away in the bag rigged up. And what I do is I can put the, the lead on like so, and I can switch out leads for whatever conditions I'm fishing. And then here I've got my, my uh, hair rigs in this little rig box. And over here I've got a bunch of snelled up octopus hooks, circle hooks. And I can put either the hair rig or the, the circle hooks on here, depending on whether I'm fishing for catfish or carp. All I need to do is just clip on a lead, clip on my leader, and I'm ready to fish. That's it. How quick is that? And I love these, these uh, lead clips because they just don't tangle as much when you're casting. So when I'm done with my fishing rod, I just take the lead off, I take the hook off, and then I just put on this little protector like so. And then I can put my rod away and it's all rigged up. And it just goes in there like that. Landing net goes in there. And over here, I've got two more rods, exact same rod and reel combos, rigged up, ready to go over here. So I have three rods, three reels, all rigged up inside this bag. Over here, I got a little tin with all my leads. Got all my terminal tackle, my catfishing rigs, uh, all my little odds and ends right in here. I've got a rig box for my zig rigs. I've got pliers and scissors here. Got some extra method leads over here. I've got some zig leaders, some PVA. I got the deeper pro plus sonar here, castable sonar. 
And then over here, I've got a set of brand new Delcom bite alarms on Signet bank sticks. And we're ready to go. So I've got tackle, bite alarms, rods, reels, everything I need in this bag. It's got double straps so you can wear it like a backpack or you can just carry it like that. But I gotta tell you, this thing is light. <laughs> My lead box weighs more than all three rod and reels combined. This thing is so incredibly light, I could carry this for miles. Everything I need to go bank fishing for catfish or carp, all I need is bait. You know, one of the reasons why I'm so excited about this, this setup is because it's the stuff that I like. Um, often I try to use domestic gear or low-end fishing gear just because I know a lot of you guys at home are on budgets. And, and I want to show you, you don't need expensive fishing gear to catch fish. But it sure is fun to have. And I really enjoy my expensive rods and I prefer them, but they're not necessary. Um, but with this kit, I was like, I'm just buying my stuff, the stuff I want to use. Bite alarms I like, the rods and the reels I like, uh, my favorite braids, you know, my favorite tackle. But it's not cheap. But I'm really excited about this. This is my fishing bug out bag. When I just need to go bank fishing, and I just need to grab a bag and run for it everything I need right here. Well, anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you had a good time. Um, this is just a really kind of weird laid back video. Uh, click subscribe if you want to see more videos from the Catfish and Carp YouTube channel. And thanks for watching, guys.